China walking the tightrope between speedy economic growth and carbon cut targets, a reality check from a seasoned investor and longtime CPPCC member. Stay with us. Welcome back. This is World Insight with me, Tian Wei. At the two sessions of every year, the government work report is one of the most important documents. According to a report this year, China will stand by the commitments to green low carbon targets. As the world's largest developing country, China faces a huge challenge in achieving the goals of carbon peaking by the year 2030 and carbon neutrality by 2060. To make inroads, China has launched the world's largest carbon market last year. What are the realities of these carbon exchanges? How can China keep economic growth while sticking to its commitments to environmental protection and sustainable development? On the sidelines of this year's two sessions, I spoke to Yi Chen Zhang, a well-known investor and chairman and CEO of City Capital, who served the CPPCC for 15 years. This is already, shall I say, our fifth year to talk to each other during your current term. You definitely have been hearing very clearly about the government work report. According to government work report, China will, quote, to orderly move toward carbon peaking and carbon neutrality. How do you understand that phrase? A lot of people are trying to interpret it. Uh, since the carbon peaking and carbon neutrality goals were announced by President Xi uh, in, I believe, September 2020, uh, the government has always uh, stressed that it's a long-term goal. Uh, although in short term, uh, we should start focusing on it. I think that, that this particular work report uh, is emphasizing the orderly uh, process, orderly approach. Uh, this is in light of uh, what happened last year when uh, some of the emission cutting goals were uh, being implemented at pr provincial levels uh, where officials taking a short, fairly rough approach by simply by cutting out of uh, uh, power and, and so on and so forth. Uh, and, and that is clearly not the way uh, to implement it. The work report also emphasized the, the, the new approach being, uh, in Chinese, it's xian li hou po. Uh, my own interpretation is you have to establish new uh, before you let, let, off, let go of the old. So, you know, that, so the, the overall approach is, is going to be much more orderly and gradual, uh, but the objective remains the same. Mm. We've seen carbon trading centers being established, of course, uh, using market-based initiatives. Uh, MBI is a great tool. Uh, how do you see the realities of uh, these carbon exchanges? Uh, these are fairly new in China. A national carbon trading platform was established uh, in July of last year. So far, the members on that exchange are only open uh, to the power uh, industry, where obviously most of the emission uh, is, is generated. So. Uh, they are allowed, they each are uh, assigned a certain amount of quota on carbon emission, and so they trade among themselves when there's a need to, you know, for, for one party to increase quota, the another party to decrease. As a result, it's not a very active market. The um, price for carbon, it's fairly low at this point, it's roughly about 50 RMB. Uh, per ton, uh, as opposed to, you know, uh, uh, end of last year, is roughly uh, 100, over 100 euro per ton in Europe. Now, that has uh, decreased in Europe uh, in recent days down to uh, roughly about 60 euro per ton. So it's still, I mean, we're talking about almost one uh, to ten uh, difference. So I, I think that, that exchanges overall uh, have to be more open to allow other 
uh, players to come in, you know, uh, investors as well as end users, other end users, so that there, that there, that there could be more active trading, more participation, at the same time better uh, price discovery, which uh, the, the signal that can be transmitted into the rest of, of the economy. Mm. Mr. Zhang, the world is changing very fast as we speak. Uh, there's a hotspot crisis going on, you know, uh, between Russia and Ukraine. There are many other things, geopolitics moving very fast. So uh, China, of course, has been committed to 2030, 2060, uh, these goals, that's for sure. And China already, government, government report indicate, you know, it's going to orderly implement that. But having said that, though, uh, different priorities pop up at different times. How do you see, uh, you know, carbon still as a priority given the complexities these days? Well, it, the, the commitment to the ultimate goals in 2030 and 2060 uh, does not mean a, you know, linear sort of uh, implementation. So initially, uh, so it, you know, it, it may, it will, will zigzag, you know, would take, would take, uh, uh, you know, there will be a period of acceleration, there will be a period of uh, uh, slowing down, but the ultimate goals remain the same. Um, given the geopolitical tension, given high energy prices, uh, it's almost unavoidable this year we need to focus on the st stability of the economy, which means, you know, of course, we, we want to be aware of carbon emission, we want to cut down uh, on energy use, uh, but fundamentally we have to ensure, you know, that there is enough energy for the economy and, and for people's lives. Yeah, also the same question about coal. Of course, there were a lot of criticism about using coal uh, by China, by some of the others, yet uh, China has been practicing clean coal technology and also to uh, streamline the earlier old power plants and update the, the technologies. Things are very different now. And now with the complexity that we earlier touched on, where do you think is, go is coal? Uh, coal will remain uh, sort of in the center of China's primary energy use. I, I don't think even uh, with uh, the commitment to the, the carbon uh, you know, objectives that will change because fundamentally uh, you know, the, that, that, the, that's the, the uh, energy form that's, you know, uh, China, China it's, it's can mostly rely on. Uh, now the question is can we use it uh, cleanly using, you know, new technology. So I, I think China is making good progress uh, in that front. Um, and, and ultimately, I think we will, uh, you know, coal, uh, oil, or gas, and, and then at the same time, I think uh, China is also, you know, uh, increasing the proportion of uh, renewables like wind and, and uh, solar. And China is also trying to increase uh, uh, hydro power and, you know, to a certain extent, nuclear energy as well. So, but, but I don't think, you know, coal will be eliminated. Coal will be a, a, a big part of uh, the energy use in China, but in a, in a clean way. But Mr. Zhang, since you are a financier yourself, you are an investor, well known in China and beyond. Tell me more, where would you put, you know, carbon trading into the overall portfolio if you have one of your own? Well, I, I think in our own uh, investments, in our own uh, business activities, we have to be uh, more aware of, uh, uh, you know, carbon emission. In our portfolio company, we also uh, trying to uh, implement more of these are uh, you know carbon uh, objectives. You know, for example, in McDonald's China, uh, last year when we're opening uh, almost 800 restaurants, and so most of them are gonna meet uh, ESG standards like uh, uh, you know certified by by Leith, 
uh, and, and so on and so forth. And at the same time, we have another portfolio company, uh, TrustLink, uh, which is a facility management for industrial parks, and we've been uh, putting up uh, solar panels on almost every one of the buildings that we manage. So yeah. these are, you know, things that we we can all do in our normal business activities and to to help uh, to cut carbon emission. Yi Shenzhang, once again, thank you so much. Congratulations for 15 years serving as member of CPPCC. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. Yi Chen Zhang, CPPCC member, talking about China carbon peak and neutrality. That's all the time we have for today. If you'd like to know more, search World Insight or check out our YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook. I'm Tian Wei. On behalf of my team at the two sessions and in our Beijing headquarters of CGTN, thanks for being with us. And I'll see you tomorrow.